Yeah, I was asking for a chance And I see you getting out I, 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 What is up Matoire family? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Antonio Matoire and I own a 2017 BMW 340i. So I've been getting a lot of DMs asking me, hey Matoire, I just got a 340i, what's the first thing I should do to it? Quite honestly, it's really up to you whether you wanna go the performance route or you wanna go the aesthetic route. But in today's video, I'm going to be giving you my recommendations of mods that you should be doing whether you're going the performance route or you're going the aesthetic route but just know at the end of the day it is completely up to you and the mods i will be talking about in this video are purely just my opinion and things that i've learned since being a part of the bmw community but with that being said i'm parked in a parking garage right now let me go ahead and set up my camera out here so we can get started with the video all right it's kind of loud in here If you guys don't already follow me on Instagram, you can follow me at Matwire. I try to stay pretty active and posting videos and reels on there. So if you guys wanna see more of my car besides YouTube, you can check me out there. All right, honestly, I didn't like the background noise out there because the music was going on. There were loud cars going by. So I'm just gonna do the video in here. So we're gonna start this video with my recommended performance mods and then we'll go ahead and move to aesthetic. And I'll probably do just a top three mods for performance and aesthetic, just so that way this video is not super long. And if you guys want a part two after this version, then I'll make a separate video for that. But now that that's out the way, my number one recommended mod for performance is definitely a catless downpipe. So there are a few reasons why you would wanna get a downpipe when you first get your BMW. One, for power, two, for sound, and three, for tuning capabilities. With that being said, you can either go catless or catted downpipe. What I mean by that is a catless downpipe is literally a hollow tube that goes straight from your turbo back to your exhaust. A catted downpipe is the same as a catless, except it has a catalytic converter in the middle. Now, with that being said, aftermarket catted downpipe are a lot less restrictive than the OEM one. So why does it matter? Why would you get a catted versus a catless? So obviously there are a lot of states that have inspections when you register your car, smog test, all that. So usually with the catless downpipe, people that are getting their car inspected don't wanna go with the catless downpipe because I've heard stories where if your check engine light is on, you will fail smog. Now I'm not quite sure how it works where if you get a tune and delete the check engine light, if they can still tell that you have a catless downpipe. For those of you guys that live in California, Nevada, or any of those states that have smog, comment down below and let me know if you're able to pass with a catless downpipe. I do have a catless downpipe on this BMW, but my car is registered in Florida since I am in the military. I got it registered in Florida, moved my car down here. So since it's registered in Florida, I don't have to follow the Nevada guidelines when it comes to smog testing. But if you live in a state where smog isn't an issue or you don't have to get your car inspected to get it registered, then I would definitely go catless just because you will get a little more power out of a catless downpipe if you do plan on going the power route because that is a crucial modification that you'll need if you do plan on tuning your car in the future. I'm currently running a VRSF catless downpipe on my car. I believe it cost me around $300. But like I said, if you do want to go with the cat, it's going to be a little more expensive. I'm not sure. I haven't looked recently. But overall, if you don't mind the smell and you don't have an issue passing smog or passing any kind of inspection, definitely go catless downpipe. Now the downpipe kind of brings me into my next mod that I recommend. So number two mod that I recommend you get after your downpipe is a tune. Now there's multiple tuners out there that you can get your car tuned with. They have MHD, you have boot mode, even JB4. I currently am running boot mode on this car. I have an E50 stage two plus tune, but there's multiple OTS maps that you can get that are with either MHD or boot mode. Pretty much what OTS maps means is off the shelf map. And it's literally just a standard tune for all cars. It's not custom fine tuned to your exact car with all your mods. It's just pretty much a standard tune for all B58s, all N20s, whatever engine you have. So that being said, if you do plan on changing any of the engine components that you have in your car or going big turbo or anything like that, you're probably Probably gonna want to get a custom tune but those off-the-shelf maps are great for those people that just have the basic you know bolt-ons so buying one of these tunes is probably gonna cost you around six hundred dollars I'm pretty sure I paid like five hundred and ninety five dollars when I got the boot mode so you can buy just one map and save fifty dollars so for example you can buy like a pump 91 octane map and that'll be the only map that you can flash or you can pay the extra $50 and have access to all the maps that boot mode offers. But regardless whether you choose boot mode or MHD, a tune is absolutely necessary to get a great amount of power out of your car paired with a catless or catted downpipe. Now this is just a little bit of extra info. It's not gonna count as one of the mods, but if you do have an N55 engine, N26, N20, any of those engines that aren't the B58, I would definitely recommend getting a charge pipe before upgrading any power mods on your 
your BMW. The charge pipe in those engines are very cheap plastic and tend to fail very easily when you're adding power. On the B58 engines, it's not as crucial as the other engines, just because it is a little more durable from factory than the other engines. My number three mod that I recommend you get is an upgraded high pressure fuel pump. So nowadays, there's a lot of high pressure fuel pumps out on the market. You can go Dorch stage two. If you really want a good amount of fuel getting pushed through your engine, you can go TU pump. So obviously if you have the generation one B58, which I have in my 340, then you have the generation one high pressure fuel pump. The generation two B58 that's in the Supras, those have what's called the TU pump. The TU high pressure fuel pump does pump a little more fuel than the gen one high pressure fuel pump. I'll go ahead and leave a chart somewhere here so you guys can compare. So if you're not looking to spend over a thousand dollars for a Dorch stage two high pressure fuel pump, then I definitely recommend getting a generation two high pressure fuel pump, AKA TU pump. It's what I'm currently running in this car. It'll allow you to run more aggressive tunes such as E30 tunes, E50 tunes. And now obviously, like I mentioned previously, if you do plan on going big turbo in the future and you know that that is your goal, then I would just skip the TU pump completely and go straight to a Dorch because you're gonna need that fuel when you get an upgraded turbo. So there's no point in getting a TU pump upgrading your turbo and then having to get a door stage two high pressure fuel pump in the future. Yes, you could run a TU pump with an upgraded turbo, but you're not gonna get the maximum power out of that turbo with a TU pump. So that wraps it up with the performance mods when you're just starting out with an F30. Once again, these are just strictly my opinions and you guys might disagree with me and that is okay, but I just wanna get this video out there to the new BMW owners that aren't really familiar with the chassis. So this is a definitely a good starting point for you guys. All right, that wraps up the performance side. So now let's get into the aesthetic mods that I think are the top three aesthetic mods that you should do to your BMW when you first get it. Now, I did want to start with one thing. This isn't going to count as one of the modifications, but I did want to tell you guys the difference between the M Sport body kit and the non M Sport body kit. This is something that I wish someone would have told me before I got into the BMW community, but nobody did. And it does make a big difference when it comes to buying like front lips or other modifications for the outside of your car. If you don't already have the M Sport body kit on your car, it kind of limits the aesthetic mods that you can buy for when it comes to like front lips, diffusers. So I'll go ahead and leave a comparison of a non M Sport body bumper compared to the M Sport bumper, just so you guys can get a visual, because I know when I was brand new to the community, I did not know that there was a difference between an M Sport and a non M Sport body kit. But if you do not have the M Sport body kit, that is definitely one thing I will recommend that you get. Not only does it look better than a non M Sport, but like I said, you won't be limited to what you can buy for your aesthetic mods if you have that M Sport body kit. If you don't already have it on your car and you plan on buying it aftermarket, you're probably gonna have to buy it unpainted and then get it painted at a shop. All right, now that that's out the way, let me start with the number one aesthetic mod that I think you should do to your BMW and that is lowering it. Now when I got my BMW it was not the first thing that I did but from the knowledge that I have gained and looking back on it I wish it was the first thing that I did. Now I'm not saying you have to go out and spend you know thousand dollars on bags you can simply just drop your car with some lowering springs that's what I did with my BMW. I'm currently sitting on some H&R Super Sport lowering springs. They'll cost you about 300 bucks. The Super Sport ones are red and they do sit a little lower than just the regular sport springs which are blue. Both are below $300 so if you're just looking for a quick drop and you don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on getting bags or coilovers, then getting the lowering springs is perfect. Now, mind you, if you get lowering springs on a car that's a little bit older and has more miles on it, your shocks are already gonna be kind of worn. So when you lower your car, the ride might be a little more rough. Now, in my case, my car, I got it around like 26,000 miles. So the shocks are still pretty good on my car. So when I lowered it, it was literally not a difference at all in the comfortability of the drive. The only difference there was, was obviously it was lower to the ground. So there wasn't as much body roll, which is a plus. So not only is it an aesthetic mod, but it also does help with performance. If you do plan on tracking your car or you just like driving your car fast, you know, around corners, the lowering springs will give your car that lower center of gravity and allow you to make turns a little bit quicker than you would be able to if your car wasn't lowered. But once again, modding your car is always thinking ahead of what you're going to want your car to be in the future. If you know that you want to build your car to be a show car, then go ahead and get those bags. You don't even waste your money or time on lowering springs if you know that one day you're going to get bags. But now that we're talking about lowering your car, that leads me to my next aesthetic mod that I think you should do to your BMW. So the second mod I think you should do is definitely going to be getting some wheels on there. Once your car's already lowered, it already has that nice aggressive stance. So getting some aftermarket wheels on there is an absolute must. I'm currently running some Adhans AFF7s and I know a lot of you guys like my wheels, but another popular wheel in the BMW community is Apex wheels. They have plenty of wheels that look really, really good on BMW chassis. There are a lot of people out there with BMWs that are running Apex wheels and I think they look really good. And when it comes to wheels, there's really no right or wrong answer on which wheel to get. It is strictly up to you. Me personally, I think wheels give a car a 
lot of personality. So whatever wheels you like, go ahead and throw them on your car. It doesn't really matter what others think. When I got these bronze wheels on white, I know a lot of people had told me beforehand, like, oh bro, I don't know if bronze is gonna look good on the white, but I ended up loving it and a lot of other people ended up loving it as well. Now mod number three, as far as aesthetic, is very difficult for me to pick because there are so many little mods for the outside of your car that just make it look a lot better and more aggressive. You got the front lip, you got the rear diffuser, and you got the spoiler. Out of those three, if I had to pick just one as far as cost and aggressiveness, best bang for your buck, definitely going to be the spoiler. You can just get a black spoiler, you can get a paint matte spoiler, carbon fiber, whatever you would like. I'm currently running a high kick PSM spoiler on my car. It looks very aggressive and I like it. But if you don't want to be that flashy or aggressive with the aesthetic of your car, they also sell smaller spoilers. I was running a pretty small spoiler on my 428i. Any of you OG subscribers are here, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I think the spoiler makes the car just look a little more sporty without hurting the pockets. Cause when you start going carbon fiber front lip, carbon fiber diffuser, those can be very expensive, but you can get a real carbon fiber spoiler for under $300. But like I said, number three, it was very hard for me to pick because quite honestly, once you lower your car and get some wheels, it already looks a whole lot better. So at that point, the other outside aesthetics are just add-ons. But like I said earlier, if you don't have the M Sport body kit, then most front lips probably wouldn't fit your car, as well as most diffusers probably wouldn't fit. That's another reason why I say spoiler as well, because whether you have the M Sport body kit or the non-M Sport body kit, all spoilers fit the same, and they still add that aggressive look to your car without having to completely change your body kit. Honestly, when it comes to aesthetics, I can go on for days. You got interior aesthetics, you got tail lights, custom hoods, there's a lot that you can do to a BMW to make it look even more aggressive than it already looks. But like I said, if you guys want to hear more about those aesthetic mods and or more performance mods, I can make a part two to this video to give you guys that information. So if you want to shoot for performance, that's okay. If you want to go the aesthetic route, that's also okay. Me, when building this car, I kind of jumped back and forth. I did some performance, some aesthetic, some performance, and then kind of ended with aesthetic. There's really not a whole lot more that I want to do to make it look better. And so now I'm jumping back to performance and hopefully going big turbo here pretty soon. But I did want to leave you guys with one thing. Like I said previously, before you start building your car, just know your end goal do you want it to be making 800 wheel horsepower or do you want it to be a show car you got to find these goals so you know how to build your car the biggest takeaway i have for you guys is build your car how you want to build it and don't let anyone tell you otherwise because at the end of the day as long as you're happy that's really all that matters what i like to say is smiles per gallon so as long as you're smiling while you're driving your car that is all that matters all right guys well i hope you liked this video if you guys learned something or it was informational please give it a thumbs up it helps me out tremendously if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you like content like this please consider subscribing to my channel and as always matuire fam remember your goals and don't stop until you reach them peace excited just to see me wish i felt the same way later on she'll probably get a name change People changing on me like the game way I wish that I waited on the same